A few weeks ago, I posted a video on my YouTube channel to be specific this video. I was shooting uh, in the sunrise and with high dynamic range and uh, I did some exposure blending to the images and one of my viewers asked uh, how do I do my exposure blendings? and create natural look. So here I'm gonna show you my workflow in uh, exposure blending and I hope you like it and uh, please give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. I usually edit my images in Capture One but for the purpose of this video I'm gonna show you my workflow both in Capture One and Lightroom. So I'm gonna edit to it uh, two photos. Uh, one is uh, this photo that I shoot in that uh, video, I'm gonna edit that one in Capture One. I also want to edit this image here in Lightroom. So let's just start with this one. Sorry to interrupt the video. I have decided to split this video in two parts. One part is what uh, you are watching now. And the second part will be uh, coming next Monday. Uh, in this part, I'm going to edit in Lightroom and uh, this like uh, photo in Lightroom. And the next week, I'm going to edit the other photo in Capture One. There are two reasons that I decided to split this video in two parts. One is that I realized that this video is getting too long. And uh, the second reason or main reason is that uh, some people might be only interested in Lightroom and some people might be interested in seeing the, uh, how I edit my picture in the capture one and some might interest in both. So you have both options, uh, but uh, for that you have to wait a little bit until next Monday. But right now I have found a very nice uh, ice pattern here that I'm going to take a picture of. And while I am doing that, you can jump into uh, my studio and watch the video. That sounds weird. Anyway. I shot three exposure for this photo. Uh, one is exposed for the highlights and then uh, a brighter exposure and a little bit brighter exposure for the shadows. Uh, you might think that the shadows are too dark here, but if I look at the histogram, can see that we don't clipping any blacks so all good here so we have all the information we need with these three exposures to blend these uh, images we have two ways one is doing that uh, manually if we bring these in photoshop and create layers with masks and select which parts we want from each of the masks and blend them together i usually do it with uh, tools that we have in lightroom and capture one which is the uh, photo merge to HDR. So I'm going to select all of these uh, exposures and then right click on one of them and go to photo merge HDR. Or you can go to this menu photo and select uh, photo merge HDR or use the shortcut. Lightroom generated this uh, uh, preview for us. Now uh, we have few options. First, we have auto align which i always turn it on because i want to make sure that all of these exposures are aligned quite well and then we have auto settings which i never use it because i want to edit photos for myself i want to have full control and then we have the ghosting options here and what is the ghosting if i select none and i have to zoom in here when we have something moves between the exposures like these waves here on the water or the clouds itself or some uh, wind uh, moving the leaves on the trees then we will get some artifacts uh, when we do this exposure blending if we look at this area for instance we have some problems some edges weird edges here and there in the waves we put a uh, deghost amount to something like low it removes some of them, but I found that for this image, uh, with, uh, we need to put it on high. And that uh, solves all the problem we have in water. And if I turn on the show deghosting, you can see all the deghosting happening here. These are the parts that they moved between the exposures, uh, but uh, Lightroom fixed it using different exposure that we, we got. I just click on merge. Our TNG file is ready. Let's collapse the tray and have more room to work with and let's go to develop module i will start with the global adjustment and for that i'm going to reduce the highlights to recover some of the highlights in the clouds 
and open up the shadows to bring back some information in the shadow area and dark area. In general, I feel that this image is a little bit cool, so I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. Also, I'm gonna maybe add a little bit of magenta. Still, we have the golden lights and colors here, which is nice. That's it for the global adjustment. I'm not gonna do anything more than that for now. I will come back to global adjustment later in the end. So now I'm gonna create a mask for the land, for the landscape. So I'm gonna go to the masks and create a radial gradient and create a big mask that covers the whole forest. By the way, you might notice that I have a new look to this masking. I just updated the Lightroom period to recording this video. So I have uh, the latest version, which is a little bit different. And it's the first time I'm, I'm trying this version. Anyway, uh, now we selected this area, but we're also affecting the sky and the reflection. I want to remove that from our selection. So I'm going to click on the subtract. When I'm on the mask, then we have a, a radial gradient. I click on the subtract. And uh, for this, I'm going to select luminance range to remove the brightest part of the image from the selection. So I'm going to click on the sky, select this part, and I'm going to smooth out the selection. So it goes smoothly from dark to, to highlights to remove those highlights from the selection, but it uh, still have some clouds in both reflection and the sky. So I'm gonna click on subtract again, and this time I'm select the brush. My flow is 100 uh, and the size of the brush is quite big. Now let's paint out the selections from the clouds in the sky and the water. We don't want to change these, uh, we will deal with them later. Now we have a fairly good uh, selection for this part. Maybe, I'm not sure if it selected the house or it, it removed it. So I'm going to uh, click on the add button and select brush. And this time I'm going to use a fairly small brush and just paint over the house to make sure that, yes, it was a little bit not selected so i'm gonna select it i'm gonna increase the exposure to about one stop i think uh, yeah maybe less than one stop that's good and maybe open up the shadows just a touch not too much let's bring it back i think the key to keep the look of the image natural is to respect the relationship between different parts of the image. If I look at the original blend, you can see that the sky is the brightest part in this image. Then the reflection and the darkest part is the forest. So we want to keep that. When we edit this image, we bring back details and bring down highlights, but we want still want to sky to be the brightest part and uh, reflection should be a little bit darker than the sky it shouldn't be brighter because no reflective surface can reflect 100 percent of the uh, energy of the light or photons and then uh, we have a little bit less brightness in the reflection and we want to maintain that to keep the image look natural so if i look at this now what i have done so far um, we have brought up the land, but it still is darker than the sky in general. But still, I think we can improve that. First of all, let me increase the contrast in this dark area as well. And maybe increase the temperature. Oh, the temperature slider removed to here they are all together now. That's interesting. So I'm going to warm it up to make the uh, image a little bit more cohesive and um, more harmonic. Maybe I'm going to increase the magenta or reduce the greens because these greens, I don't want them to look green. So that's good. Now we want to create a mask for the sky. And to do that, that's very easy now. We have this mask that is 
for the landscape. So let's call it landscape or land. And then right click on it and select duplicate and invert. So it creates a new mask, but it's inverted. And that one we can call sky. Sky and reflection, but I just call it sky. For the sky, I feel that I want to increase the exposure a little bit in the sky. I'm keeping an eye on bright parts and white. It's bright enough, but it's not uh, overexposed here. And I want to remove some of the clarity and add some haze to the sky. What these two sliders does is to make it a little bit more soft and uh, dreaming look or make this make these clouds a little bit softer which i think works quite well with the sky usually unless you want to have a very very moody sky uh, this is not the case for this image i'm reducing the clarity just a little bit maybe i will add some haze to it to create some more light and glow generally and not too much it's about 10 uh, minus 10 and with these two a slider that we just changed we lost some of the contrast beautiful contrast that we had in the sky and the reflection so are we gonna bring back some of the contrast with the contrast slider and perhaps uh, the sky now is a little bit too purple maybe i'm gonna bring it back maybe warm it up a little bit or no Maybe I increase the saturation instead. Okay. So now let's turn this mask on and off and see what we have done. It definitely helps with the, the image to look more natural. But I think that we lost some of the good quality contrast that we had. So maybe I will adjust these parameters and bring back some of those nice contrast and color that we had before before and after all of these adjustments i think it looks natural we can call it done but i want to go a little bit further with this image to make it a little bit more interesting uh, so i'm going to create a new mask and this time linear linear gradient and I'm going to affect the whole image so I put the mask outside of this frame to cover everything now it's going to uh, work like another global adjustment layer in general I want to create some sort of glowy effect or orton effect or some some ethereal look to this image so I'm going to drop the clarity a little bit now uh, it affects also the the forest and the trees so it's affecting everything not again uh, not too much i'm gonna drop the dehaze as well and let's see what it does before after maybe it's a little bit too much so i'm gonna reduce the amount 40%, 45% of what we have done is good. And of course, increasing the contrast in this layer as well to bring back some of the contrast before, after. So the effect is very, very subtle, uh, but I think it's worked quite well. Now, there are two things in this image that I'm not very happy about. One is this reeds here and this corner. I can put another mask on this and make them dark. And we don't see the, the reflection here. So it's nice if I can just remove them or make them darker. Or maybe make these reeds as well a little bit darker. And the other part is this corner of the sky that it's very bright. Uh, I like to the corner of my image to be a bit darker to make this uh, the frame looks nicer so i'm gonna maybe i crop that i can create another mask and color create this part make it darker more more pinkish or glow uh, yellowish color 
but in this case the easiest way I'm gonna crop it to something like 4x5 and that crops all of it out which is good the last thing I want to do in this image is to work with the colors so I go to HSL uh, pan panel and uh, go to saturation let's uh, drop the saturation of the blues a little bit and purple this yellowish greens I'm gonna remove some of the saturation change the hue to so a little bit more yellowish rather than greenish so we go from this to this that I think that's a nicer colors I like it better and maybe the hues can go a little bit towards yeah purple goes to blue yeah let's change the hue of blue and purple a little bit i think that's good enough and uh, we can call it done for this image yeah let's add some vignette and then we'll call it done the way i did this edit uh, I kept the relationship between different parts of this image so the sky is still is the brightest part reflection is the second brightest part and then the land is still darker than the rest of it so you can see that uh, still we have the natural look to this exposure blending image so that's it for this image let's jump to capture one and do the, the second image